When you finally realize all that God has done for you, the only true response is gratitude. This is the overarching theme for our Attitude of Gratitude sermon series throughout the entire month of November. And using the Psalms as our conversation partner on the journey, we'll explore how to be people who live lives that exude gratitude on a regular basis, both individually and as a community of faith. Now, since the Psalms are meant to be sung, recited, read, and prayed communally, I'd like us to join together in a responsive reading with today's partner, Psalm 66. I'll read the verses designated for one and ask that you please respond to the lines marked many. Let us now lift up our voices and listen for God's words to us in these words of the psalmist. Shout joyfully to God all the earth. Sing praises to the glory of God's name. Make glorious his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you, sings praises to you, sings praises to your name. Come and see God's deeds. God's works for human beings are awesome. God rules with power forever, keeps a good eye on the nations, so don't let the rebellious exalt themselves. All you nations, bless our God. Let the sound of his praise be heard. God preserved us among the living. He didn't let our feet slip a bit. But you, God, have tested us. You've refined us like silver, trapped us in a net, laid burdens on our backs, let other people run right over our heads. We've been through fire and water. I will offer the best burned offerings to you, along with the smoke of sacrificed rams. I will offer both bulls and goats. Come close and listen, all you who honor God. I will tell you what God has done for me. I have cried out to you. Bless God, he didn't reject my prayer. He didn't withhold his faithful love from me. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please pray with me? Startle us, O God. Startle us anew with your truth. And by the power of your living spirit, open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to these words, your holy word that we might draw closer to Christ, empowered to go forth as his faithful disciples in the world. Amen. In this season of the year when daylight shortens and darkness lengthens, when it's common for the doldrums to eke into our daily routine and the monotony of the mundane to shroud our perceptions, the psalmist breaks onto the scene with words of wisdom that encourage us to keep a bigger picture in mind. And this bigger picture is one of the people of God trusting in God's presence and eternal protection in both good times and bad. It's a picture that depicts the truth that life is not always easy. In fact, it's often downright hard, but God's goodness still abounds. It's up to us to open our eyes and open our hearts to respond. So to help us live this bigger picture, I imagine the psalmist saying, listen up, I've got some words of wisdom to share. They describe a pattern for life grounded and founded on gratitude that if you choose to follow, will change everything for you. 
Living out these steps will transform how you see the world, how you see the people around you, how you see yourself. It will transform how you handle hardships that come your way and how you endure times of trouble. Live out this pattern and you'll begin to see and experience everyday ordinary things in a new way. And it's all possible because the pattern for life anchors us where we need to be anchored to the one who created us, loves us, saved and redeemed us, and holds our future in hand. And the pattern for life is this. Step one, remember and recognize the extraordinary goodness of God on a regular basis. Say to God, how awesome are your works? This expansive universe of galaxies and planets and light years of time is your masterpiece. This planet on which we live and move and breathe is your creation. You are the author of life who authored each and every one of our lives, who made us in your image, who calls us by name and beckons us into relationship with you. You, O oh God, ordered creation and entrusted us to steward it for you. How awesome are your works the gift of land and sea and sky you placed in our hands, snow-capped mountains, sandy beaches and desert expanses, ocean waters deep and wide, animal and vegetable and mineral, that sliver of golden moon that was veiled lightly behind the clouds last night, each and every breathtaking thing designed by you are glimpses of your glory, reminders of you and your abiding presence. And acknowledging this on a daily basis gives us the perspective we need to properly revere, honor, and adore you. For every glimpse of glory that comes our way, the psalmist encourages us, say to God, how awesome are your works? What awesome miracles God performs for people big ones and small ones, all around us, all the time. Autumnal leaves shimmering in the sunshine, thundering waves crashing along the shoreline, cuddling a baby close to your heart, a good, long, loud belly laugh, a brilliant mind at work, the sky at sunset, an answered prayer, the smell of freshly cut grass, children playing, holding someone's hand, meeting a new friend, a crackling fire on a cold winter's night, the rustle of wind, especially if it brushes your face, being embraced by community, falling in love, sharing a meal, the font, the table, and sacramental grace, the incarnation. How awesome are your works, O oh God. What other glimpses of glory would you add to this list? I'd love to hear you call out a few of your favorites. Freedom. Freedom. Babies. Babies. I asked my 11-year-old this yesterday just in case it was quiet in the space, and she said, naked mole rats. <laughs> you see, the extraordinary goodness of God is all around us everywhere. So if we are currently not noticing it, not letting it penetrate our hearts, let's slow down and be more mindful about recognizing it as the psalmist models so well. Say to God, how awesome are your works. God's works for human beings are awesome. God turned the sea into dry land so that they could pass the river on foot. And God preserved us among the living and did not let our feet slip a bit. The psalmist reminds us of the faithfulness of God who did not let our feet slip before going on to say that this does not preclude or protect us from harm or struggles or tragedy or trauma. By no means will our lives be free of trials and tribulations. However, when hard times come, and they will come, we meet them by ceaselessly celebrating God's goodness, by calling forth these foundational grace and glory-filled moments that help us stand strong, and by remaining rooted in gratitude. 
And this brings us to step two in the pattern for life, which is tell the truth <coughs> about now. Coming face to face with painful circumstances is a re reality that all of us will meet on this earthly life. And the psalmist purposely includes them in the big picture. But you, O oh God, have tested us. You've refined us like silver, trapped us in a net, laid burdens on our backs, let other people run right over our heads. We've been through fire and water. The psalmist confronts the reality of pain, encouraging God's people that perseverance and endurance are possible if, during these times, we stay focused on God's abiding and ever-present love for us. God's covenantal love that is faithful and true and eternally steadfast. In Hebrew, this committed, unwavering love is called hesed. And we are benefactors of God's unbreakable bond of hesed love. And it is in this hesed, this binding, can never let you go covenantal love, that we ground ourselves during times of testing that we point to when laden with burdens too heavy to bear, that we cling to when fire and flood and other misfortunes consume us. And these wise words penned by the psalmist centuries ago still speak truth and relevance to us today. We've been through fire and water. Yes, we have, just this week. California is being ravaged by fast-moving wildflowers that have devastated multiple cities and families and properties. In 2018 alone, the state has endured 7,300 fires and a burned area of 1.5 million acres. Another fire we're going through is gunfire. Yet another gunman opened fire in a nightclub in Thousand Oaks, California this week, killing 12 people. This shooting became the 307th on the 311th day of our year, making the American average for these tragedies, tragedies almost one per day. And within the last month, raging floodwaters have wreaked havoc across central Texas too. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We have been through fire and water. And that's not all, Lord. Our backs are heavy laden with all kinds of concerns, from cancer diagnoses to caring for aging parents to our kids getting bullied at school to the caravan of Central Americans. Many of us feel a sense of being tested as we struggle with the polarization and divisiveness taking place around major issues facing our country today. We disagree on topics of health care and education, racial discrimination and immigration, the world economy and global warming. It is a weighty load, O oh Lord. Yet. The psalmist shows us that as a people of God, in the midst of these tough and troubling times, we speak the truth about the present. Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann describes it like this. He says, biblical faith is not soft, sweet romanticism. It is hard, tough truth-telling, but truth-telling in the context of God's good love. This is a different story than the world tells us. The world tells us either that it is all right and you do not need to worry, or that it's a jungle out there. But people who cluster around Jesus refuse either easy romanticism or angry cynicism. The wonder of faith is to trust in the midst of the truth. End of quote. And the ability to do that, to trust in the midst of the truth, brings us to step three of the pattern for life. And here the psalmist claims confidently, but you brought us out to freedom. It is true that Pharaoh exploited and enslaved us. It is true that the Egyptians marginalized and oppressed us. It is true that we were beaten and used and abused, but you, brought us out to freedom. 
The, the psalmist calls forth memories of the Exodus and God turning the sea into dry land so the Israelites could escape the pursuing Egyptians, reminding both the psalmist and his worshiping community that their ever-present God was indeed with them throughout the entirety of their struggle. And then deliverance. And with deliverance came freedom, and with freedom came resurrection and new life for the people of God as they began their journey to the promised land. And so goes our story. The confident claim of the psalmist is the same confident claim that we make today as the people of God. God with us is with us. And because Christ conquered sin and death on the cross once and for all, for all of us, in his resurrection, we too have been given the gift of deliverance and the freedom, resurrection, and new life that accompanies it. This is our ultimate truth. And the confidence we have is grounded in this resurrection and new life that has been given to us, God's promise fulfilled. And it's from here too that our hope and joy breaks forth and every ounce of our being cries out to respond. And how do we respond? The psalmist says, I will enter your house with entirely burnt offerings. I'll keep the promises I made to you. I will offer you the very best that I have. And then, and then I will call everyone to come close and listen so I can tell you what God has done for me. Which brings us to the final step of the pattern for life. Respond with offerings and testimony. I will tell you what God has done for me. This means going a step above and beyond general thankfulness for things. Typically, when I hear people share their, what they're grateful for, I just hear a list of things. I'm grateful for my family, my job, my possessions, the nice weather, this beautiful day, etc. But the instruction encourages us to be more specific to articulate that we're grateful to God for these things, acknowledging God's role as the bestower of all good gifts. Because when you have an attitude of gratitude, you share why you're grateful. I think it might even be better to say it this way. When you have an attitude of gratitude, you share to whom you're grateful. We offer our gifts and we offer our testimony and gratitude for all that God has done, and in doing so, we, oh, all that God has done, is doing, and will be doing, and continue to do in our lives, both individually and as a family of faith. And then this brings us full circle back to the beginning of the psalm, where the psalmist encourages us with appropriate ways to respond to this amazing God who's given us everything. Verse 1, shout joyfully to God all the earth. Verse 2, sing praises to the glory of God's name. Verse 3, say to God, how awesome are your works. Verse 5, encourage others to come and see God's awe-inspiring deeds. So as we continue to practice this attitude of gratitude, let's do our best to follow the psalmist's lead, to shout, sing, say, and see, always in a way that specifically points to God and acknowledges our thankfulness for the cre to the Creator for all the goodness in our midst. Now, I started reflecting on that, what it would really look like to make a habit of shout, sing, say, and see in the ways that we give um, thanks to God. And I have to admit, I like the idea when we're all gathered here in worship. I loved all the songs we sang this morning, the especially shout it, go on and scream it from the mountain, go on and tell it to the masses that he is God. Now, singing this one every time gives me the goosies, uh, to steal a term from J-Lo on World of Dance. But I find it very easy to say how awesome are the works of God while I'm here surrounded by all of you. But what about out there? Are we able to shout out there? Are we able to scream it from the mountains and tell it to the masses? Are we able to invite others to come and see? Are we able to tell others what God has done for me? I mean, it seems like a pretty outrageous thing to ask us to publicly demonstrate our love of God and gratitude to God in such loud and boisterous and bold ways. Don't you think? Isn't it a little over at the top that the psalmist is asking this much of us? Well, I thought so. And then all of a sudden, while I was reflecting on it, my husband's hurrah from the next room broke through my reflection time. I think UT had just scored. 
And then, thinking of that, made me picture, my sister and I had a little getaway to our alma mater two weeks ago. So we went back to the University of Missouri to gather with 50 of our sorority sisters. And on Saturday, we donned our black and gold and we headed to Faroe Faro Field at Memorial Stadium for the football game. And I am telling you, within a few minutes of kickoff, I was standing up screaming and shouting and cheering and chanting. There was a buzz of electricity pulsing through the stadium. And each time a touchdown was scored, the crowd was so grateful for the great play that we went wild as fireworks burst into the sky with a sizzle and a boom. And I did not think twice about shouting or singing there. The next day on the flight home, I was even still sporting my school colors along with a few other folks on the plane quite a few folks on the plane, so much so that the flight attendant leaned down to my sister and I and said, is there something special about yellow in Missouri? <laughs> I'm noticing a lot of people are wearing it today. So we filled her in on MU and the Tigers and black and gold with such enthusiasm that she said, well, I'll have to make a note on my calendar and wear yellow the next time I'm assigned this leg. <laughs> I did not think twice about sharing so excitedly about my school or team. I find it interesting that being a Tigers fan, and I'm even a mediocre one at that, that shouting and singing and boldly supporting my alma mater comes so naturally. Makes me wonder what might be possible with my attitude of gratitude if I make the psalmist pattern for life so grounded in gratitude an integral part of my own. What are the possibilities if I remember and recognize the extraordinary goodness of God on a regular basis, if I tell the truth about now, if I claim with confidence, but you, O oh God, brought us out to freedom, and if I respond with my very best offerings and my personal testimony, I will shout and sing and say and see, and I will tell you what God has done for me. May it be so. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you for breathing life into us, for inviting us into relationship, for demonstrating the power of steadfast love, for speaking through the psalmist, and for showering us with an abundance of goodness. In the freedom you've given us, may we use our voices to shout and sing the glory of your name. May we witness your love and grace to others, and may our lives exemplify gratitude for who you are and the gifts you've given us. We ask this all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.